Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Here is the game Endzone, A World Apart, which features some interesting mechanics and systems. Let's inspect and remake the soil moisture radiation system to see how it works. It involves a grid system, spawning some moving clouds, adding moisture as the rain falls, making the water spread throughout the map, and of course dealing with radiation. Hopefully you'll learn something new that you can then apply to mechanics on your own games. By the way, I'm trying out this format because there were a lot of comments on my game design breakdown videos asking for a more actionable tutorial format, so let me know if you like this type of video. Alright, so first just a quick overview of what the game is about. The game is called Endzone, a world apart. It just had its full release coming out of early access after one year of constant updates. It's a very interesting city builder where you essentially rebuild after the nuclear apocalypse. So that means you have to deal with radiation, droughts, sandstorms and so on. You need to build up your colony by giving your people homes to live in, set up some supply chains to gather food and water, and of course make sure nothing is contaminated. The game features an endless survival mode, but also some really unique interesting scenarios. In one of them, the goal is to find all of the seeds in the world. Another one, you start with a completely broken settlement and need to rebuild, and so on. So if you're into city builders, then this is a very good one. I've definitely enjoyed my time with it. And this is also a game made with Unity. If you want to pick it up, there's an affiliate link in the description, and if you use that, you'll also be supporting the channel. And follow the curator page on Steam if you want to see more of these types of videos. Okay, so the game features a bunch of interesting systems and mechanics, with one of them being the soil moisture radiation system, so let's see how it works. This is one of the more complex systems, but once you understand the basics, it's relatively simple to implement. As the seasons go by, you have some seasons with tons of rain, some with very little, and sometimes you have full-on droughts. The soil system has a moisture state and also a radiation state. And to handle that, the whole game is run on the grid. You can see it when you place down buildings. I've already done quite a lot of videos based on a grid system. This is something that is insanely useful for tons and tons of games. You can go watch the whole playlist to see a really nice grid system being built step by step. In the system that I made, you can define a class that will be instantiated on each grid position. So that's perfect for building something just like this soil system. You just define the class that is placed on each grid object, then you can store any data you want in any of those positions. So in this case, maybe you define a float to store the moisture state. Using a float, you can make it a simple normalized value, with 0 being completely dry and 1 being fully wet. And the other part of this system is the radiation. So for that one, you can either make a completely separate grid, or simply just add another float over here for the radiation. Then the game actually splits moisture into four categories. So you've got dried out, dry, moist, and wet. You can use a simple enum to define these values, and then some basic math to convert the float value into these enums. Then for the radiation, there's only two states, either it's radiated or not. So for that, you can just define a certain value, like maybe 0.5, and if it's above this value, then the position has radiation, and if underneath, then it does not. Then just a simple function to return a boolean. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. Then with that, you just use a visual, for example, like the town map that I made that works on top of the grid system. Then you convert those moisture states into various colors. So that's the base of the system. With that, you have all of the data you need. Then for handling the moisture and drying out of the soil system, the game has an actual cloud simulation, meaning that there are some clouds and you can see them moving around both in the visual as well as on the town map. It's a great way to add some more complexity to the system to make it feel much more realistic as opposed to having moisture just come out of thin air. For that, you could define some cloud shapes, maybe by drawing them on a texture. Then you just cycle through every pixel in that texture. So just a basic cycle going through the whole width and height of the texture to the object. And then you check out the pixel color in order to convert it into a simple boolean grid. You can make a texture with literally just one channel, or a normal texture and paint the area in white, or just one of the main colors, so red, green, or blue. I covered lots of interaction that you can do with textures and pixels in my series on how I made the characters in Battleground Tycoon, so you can grab pixels, copy, paste them, and so on. And the reason why you convert it into a bowling grid is simply for performance. Doing a get pixel call on every single pixel on the texture is a pretty expensive thing, whereas simply grabbing the value from a boolean array is pretty cheap. So essentially the boolean grid just acts as a cache for the actual texture. So now with that, you have a grid with all of the positions that the cloud has, then you just need to combine that data with the position of the clouds and the underlying soil grid. So you can spawn an actual cloud object and move it over to the scene. 
Then on every certain amount of time, like for example on 10 times per second, you simply grab the cloud object position and convert it into a grid position. You do a cycle going through all of the positions in the cloud and add moisture to all of those soil grid positions. For even more complexity, you can make that value depend on the weather, exactly like the game does it. The game has the season system and some of them have tons of rains and some of them have no rain. So you just check with that season system to figure out just how much moisture to add on every song. Now I mentioned you run this on every certain amount of time and not on every update. Again, the reason is performance. If you have a very large world and you try to update on every single frame, then it's going to cause a serious performance impact. There are usually two ways that you can do to achieve better performance. Either you make the logic run faster or you just run the logic less often. So in this case, running it less often is perfect and the player will definitely not notice. One super simple way to manage that is with a time tick system, which I covered in detail in another video. It's just a very simple class to run some logic every certain amount of time as opposed to on every update. I've used that simple class and that simple system in pretty much all of my Steam games in order to ensure good performance. So with that, you have the clouds adding moisture. Then you just make multiple cloud shapes and combine it with a system to spawn clouds randomly over time and you have it all working. The clouds spawn, they move normally, they constantly check their grid position, and if the cloud has some rain then it adds moisture onto those positions. For drying out, it's also very simple. You just constantly go through all the positions in the grid and lower their moisture by a tiny amount. So if there are clouds and it's raining, it will also receive more moisture than it dries out. But as you stop spawning clouds then the whole thing becomes much more barren. Now once again, the game takes this even further. Every season you have either rain or no rain, but then you also have sunlight. So again, if you want to have more complexity, you can integrate this. So instead of lowering the moisture on every single position every time, maybe you do the same logic as for the clouds, except you check for the sun amount, and then you dry out more where there's no clouds as opposed to where there are clouds. So with that simple addition, you add even more complexity and realism to this system without adding much more effort. With all of that, you end up with a really awesome soil system, but as you can see, it's all based on some very simple interactions. For the radiation, it's really the same thing, just maybe you spawn it differently. As I said, you can have a completely separate grid to handle just the radiation, or simply reuse the same one. Then the game features some seasons with toxic rain, so if that's the case, then you can add a bit of radiation on the exact same logic where you add moisture from the clouds. However, the game also sometimes gets radiation out of nowhere. So for that, you can do a very similar logic, except instead of spawning some moving clouds, you just spawn a static radiation cloud on just one position, so no visual. Then you add a ton of rain with radiation instantly and you despawn that cloud. With that, you end up with radiation pretty much popping out of nowhere. Now with all of that, there's still one thing missing from this system. Just like this, you have some areas that are wet where there are clouds, but it can be completely barren right next to it. That's not really realistic. In real life, water moves around. It doesn't stay static if there's somewhere it can go. So for that, you can cycle through every position on the grid. Then you check on its neighbors. If they have less moisture, then you grab some from that grid position and transfer it to the neighbor. So over time, the water spreads all throughout the world, even if you just spawn a single cloud right in the middle of the map. Again, some extremely simple logic. The only challenge with this one is really just making it performant. So as you can see, this is a great system and it looks extremely complex, but it definitely is something you can recreate in your own games. All it takes is an underlying grid system and some clever logic to make that simplicity look complex. Then of course, the farming system interacts directly with the soil system. It is also working on a grid, just like every building, and every plant has a grid position. So that plant simply asks the soil system to get the moisture and radiation underneath, Based on the moisture, the plant will grow either faster or slower, and based on the radiation, the final food item will either be clean or radiated. Again, some pretty simple logic. So that's how you can recreate this system in your own games. If you want to pick up the game, there's an affiliate link in the description, and if you use that one, you'll also be supporting the channel, and follow the creator page on Steam if you want to see more of these types of videos. Like I said, I'm trying out this format because there were a lot of comments on my game design breakdown videos asking for a more actionable tutorial format, so let me know if you find this format helpful. Also, let me know what other games have interesting mechanics that you like to know how they work. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.